So we should probably write some more complex code for this. So currently it's just reading um, some characters from a char array and throwing it into the indexed spots on these uh, little modules. But we wanted to do something else. We want it to be a word guessing game. So that means we have to do some game bits. So those game bits might involve having some kind of win condition display possibly. Um, it also kind of needs a way for you guys to interact with it and to submit your guess. Now I've thought of a way that that can happen using a form on my own website. And it's not super interactive, like I'd love it to be a live stream where you watch the video and you post a comment and it or it reads that. Now I can't figure out how to do that with YouTube just yet. It's possible that I could do it with the API and look at the chat, but I don't know how that works just yet. One option is to use Twitch, which I've been a member of for ages, but I've just started doing some streams just for a laugh. But I could use that to stream this and people guess in the, the chat. Now, I thought it would be really easy and I could use uh, like Nightbot or what a t a <coughs> Twitch bot. Um, but it looks like it's a bit more complex. There is someone who's written a library called the Arduino IRC client, um, and that's Internet Relay Chat. And you can actually link that in with Twitch. So that might be a possibility. However, I don't know anything about it yet. And I just want to get this working in a way that I can interact with it through the internet. So that's what we're going to do now and do a little bit of coding and get a basic setup going, and then we can maybe test it and see if it would be fun and then progress onto having it be Twitch interactive. Unless anyone knows a way of doing it through YouTube chat, that would be ideal because that's where all of you guys are. All right, let's go and write some code and I'll see if I can get a camera on this at the same time so you can see what it's doing. So remember in the last video when I said that I'd gotten a bit carried away with the code before, well, I'd kind of already written it all, but I want to step by step through it with you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our base example that we finished last time. So really that last video was literally me just wiring it up. Don't know if anyone realized that, but I realized that after I watched it anyway, we'll carry on. Um, and essentially we're going to turn this into what is a game right now but just played through a form. So I'm going to speed up some sections of this video because holy moly is coding boring to watch sometimes. So what I'm going to do first is put our web request stuff in. Now, all this is going to do is read from a text file and apply that text to our char array that we've got here. So I'm going to start copying in the Wi-Fi sections. I've already got a bit where my SS, SSID and password is included in a .h. So I'll just start popping those in. So first things first, we're going to include our Wi-Fi .h, and that will um, allow us to make some web requests. We're also going to use our begin Wi-Fi using that SSID and password I've cleverly hidden away in a .h file. And we're going to put in some sort of code to check whether it's connected and whatnot. Now I'm going to put our web request in the main loop and I'm going to stick it in sort of just a blink without delay thing. Um, I think we all just steal that example from the code when we want to do this, but uh, essentially all it does is it checks the millis and when it's past a certain time, it will activate. This stops it from being a blocking process. Now in this code, you're going to get to see how the sausage is made, like where the guess is stored. Now, I'll change this later, so it's not really an issue. But um, for now, you can see what, what goes on behind the scenes. And I never did quite figure out how to read something from a web response and ignore the headers. So I'm bypassing that and using a special character in the string, which in this case is a tilde. And I'm just looking for that. And that tells me when my the, the data I'm interested in starts. So once I do that, I'm going to read that char and then put it straight into my array. And that's largely it. Now we are ready to go, essentially. So we should be able to read what's in that guess. 
that should essentially be it. So let's upload this code and see what happens. I'm not entirely sure if it works. I'll just have to debug it if I copied it in the wrong order because I'm copying it from something which is a little bit more complete than this. I'm just going to wait for it to compile. I've already realized I've missed out some variables here, I think. Oh no, they might be included in the main loop. They are because they reset at the start of every loop. So while it's uploading, I'll show you. So those variables I'm talking about are started um, and started int, and they are included here. So I'm using those, and in fact, I'll quickly explain it. In fact, we can see the display has changed, and it's just read the guess. Now the guest is MakerCast, but let's just change that guess. So I'm going to use this form I created to change the guess. So I'll just guess it. Guess it. It's got to be an eight letter word, so we're going to choose meetings. And so it will send. Now I've put some very rudimentary things in here to stop people spamming it. If you are clever, you could spoof it absolutely, but please don't. Um, so I've just changed my guess. And it won't change it, actually. I need to reset it. So let's reset it from MakerCast to um, Absolute. Now, this should change that guess to be all dashes, which it's just done, which is good. Now, I can change. We know it's Absolute, so I can now change it to be um, Ab Eatings. And then it will bring our guess in as a B. So my guess code, uh, which is PHP, which is just here, does some of the logic behind the scenes. Now, if I was able to get it so it communicated directly with a chat function, I could bring that logic inside the ESP32. So you can see here in our PHP code, um, now that we've got that displaying what one file says, so what one text file says, so it's pulling in that information and displaying it on screen. This part is doing the logic, so comparing it against the word we're looking for. So if we look, I'm doing a cookie thing just to prevent people from doing cross sites like post submission. You can absolutely spoof that, but it's just a little thing. I'm hoping people don't muck about too much. Anyway, so if the cookie's there, we continue. Errors are still enabled. I'll delete that eventually. Um, and then we've got the post incoming guess that comes from the form. Um, then I turn it into uppercase in case anyone's typed in lowercase. There might be a way of doing that in the form or just doing it in JavaScript. I think I'm not sure if I am doing it in JavaScript. Let's have a look. No, I'm not turning it into uppercase in the JavaScript, but in, in our guess thing here, so we're turning it into uppercase. I'm not sanitizing it at all. Not really worried about that at the moment. Then what the word to find is in word.txt. So this is the, the golden word that we're looking for. So that's word to find. Previous guess is already stored in guess.txt. So it's comparing previous guesses. So if you imagine it a bit like Hangman, where you get to choose a letter, um, provided you're telling me what space you want it to be, so you can just separate it by the characters. You say, I reckon that letter at num uh, space number three is an A. It will send that guess along. Then we've got uh, left trim. So it trims everything off uh, apart from, well, it trims this bit off basically. So it trims from the left from that character. So we're going to get rid of this special character we've used to remove our headers. So I have to save that in the text file. So uh, it will essentially, oh, it says there, gets rid of our delimiter. That's the word I'm looking for. So our form is just recording or sending along data with these stars here. And the guess is reading the text, which has got that delimiter included. So we're going to strip out those stars in a second. So from guess.txt, we're removing this delimiter, which is what the ESP requires. It doesn't need it. If I was cleverer, I might be able to remove the headers without it. We're going to change the previous guess to uppercase just to make sure that nothing's gone wrong. It needs to be uppercase. Then we've got our variables here. Now, these are variables we're going to use to check against. So outward and current guess. So we've got list here. This is what I'm going to use to separate out 
um, our string that's incoming, which is the star guess, star guess star, and we're going to explode it with star. So essentially it turns into a sort of an array. Um, so what we're going to get is the first value, which will be a star, the second value, which will be a star or a blank, and then the middle one. So whatever's in between those two stars will be our incoming guess. Might be easier ways to do this, but this is what I found works. And then we're going to do a little bit of processing. So we're going to check that the word is the right length. So I'm not stupid enough to think that other people might try and submit words not through the form. So we're going to check that it's eight characters long. That's the length of my display, as long as it's as long as this word to find. So actually, it could be less. But my form is limited to eight characters, um, maximum value and minimum value. Um, and then so for each one of those characters, we're going to iterate through. So we're going to say we're going to use our string like an array. So in PHP, it's just a value. It doesn't really need to be a string or a, a type at all. So our processed guest guess, which is this one we've made up a case, we're going to compare the first character against the word to find character. And if they are the same, then our current guess, so that's our blank value up here, we're going to put the word to find value in. So this is the current guess is what's going to get recorded into guess.txt. Then we're going to look at uh, current guest. We're going to change current guess to word to find. Um, and if we don't find that, so else, we're going to change it to a dash so that it's hidden. Um, then we're going to go down here and we're going to look at the same essential thing, uh, but we're going to change our outward. So we've got current guess and outward. So we're comparing it against current guess. So essentially our outward is being constructed. We could construct it in another way up here, but this is just how I've chosen to do it. Then outward is we, we append or prepend rather a tilde on the outward to make it easily readable by the ESP32. And then we file put contents guess word or guess.tst. God, there's a lot of guess and words and all sorts. So that's our PHP for now. It can certainly change in the future, but this works. We also have to find a way to reset that word. So just got a very simple thing here. Reset takes a get parameter. Um, so it's just word as a variable coming in. Um, the out word is then reset to all dashes. And then we put those dashes into guess and then we put the new word into word. Now there's no like checking the length here. I just have to remember to do that. Now, eventually we'll use this to reset it so that the ESP32 will have a list of words in it. Um, it can keep track of the words it's already used and then it will reset itself. It would be wonderful if I could find a way to like open the ESP32 to the internet safely. I don't know how to do that. So if anyone here knows how to do it, that would be great. So that's how the backend PHP is working. So let's continue to change our code here so that we can make it do a few more things. So the next thing we want to do is make our characters random looking. So I talked to you about in the last video about um, unexpected makers whopper display. Well, I love the idea of the characters being all random and flying around and stuff. So my next thought was to put some random values in where we have a dash. So we already know that the text that's going to get returned has dashes where we haven't guessed the word or the letter correctly, the character. So we can use that to say if it's a dash, then let's throw in a random character. So let's bring that over now. So I have already written this code. This code actually sits in a different section and we'll come to that in a minute. So I'm going to have to modify this a bit to make it work. But if we just pop this in here for now, and I just take out counter. Um, now we need to create a new buffer to do this because we don't want to overwrite our guest buffer. So what we're going to do is create a second buffer. So let's just pop buffer two up there. So what we're going to say is a for loop. So we're going to say for int i, basically we're going to run through the eight letters that we have. And we're going to say if the display buffer, so that's the information we've read from the text file, 
is a dash, then our display buffer two at that section is going to be a random value from 48 to 90. And that's essentially going through um, some ASCII values. Let's bring up those ASCII values. So these are the ASCII values. So if we bring up our code again, we can see that we're choosing a random value from 48 to 90. So I think that's inclusive. So I think 90 is included. So if we look at the table here, we get 48 and then down to 90. Hopefully you can see 90, except you can't. Um, let's zoom out a little. Hopefully you'll be able to see it now. It'll be very small. So we've got 48, which is 0 to Z. So when you're dealing with a char array, an int is essentially or can be essentially a char. So it's going to take whatever character value that is and it'll throw it into our uh, display. So that's what I'm doing. I'm creating a random number from 48 to 90 and throwing it into that display buffer 2. Otherwise, display buffer 2 equals display buffer i if it isn't a dash. So we'll display the characters we actually guessed. So now we have to do this. Just change this from display buffer to be display buffer two. Now this is where we're going to see the problems that I spoke about before. If I just upload this, hopefully I'm not missing any variables that I've forgotten about. Quick wine upload break. Hang on a minute. I have to press the programming button on this thing every single time. The amount of times programming is fueled by wine is incredible. Now you can see it's bounding around a little bit there, but it has selected my two characters. Now, if we just watch it, um, we'll be able to see the symptoms that it displayed when I was trying this. So our interval is five seconds. Um, for this, uh, the uh, current millis thing. And what it does after those five seconds, it will pause the display. So if it gets interrupted, they will hang around on screen for too long or on, on the, the display for too long. And you'll see it's not actually changing that quickly. So we have a delay of 200. So let's change that 200 to 75 and we'll just um, be able to see that a bit better. So I'll just upload that. So what I decided to do was to take the display out of the loop and essentially use the other core in the ESP32. So at faster speeds, I think you really get to see where the, the internet request will interrupt the display, hopefully. I mean, I'm not seeing it now. <laughs> I'm totally not seeing it at all. I tell you though, it was interrupting. So we're going to do it anyway, because it's been working. Plus I want to do some other things as well, but that seems to be working miraculously well. So let's take another guess, actually. So we know the word is absolute. So let's say it's uh, one, two, three, four, five, U-T-E. So it's going to uppercase those characters and we, well, it's already changed. You can see that. So we now have those other letters left. It actually looks pretty good. I don't even need to use that other code. Incredible. So essentially, we now already have this game going. All we need to do is have this PHP bit in the background, but it's not ideal. So if anyone could think of a way of changing that, that would be great. But let's let's muck around with this some more. And I'll tell you what, I'll reset this um, to another one so that it resets all of those characters. There you go, they're all flipping around now and we'll put it into uh, another core because I just like the fact that I managed to do it. I didn't make it up, I copied someone else's code, but let's do it. So essentially I don't need this down here anymore. So let's take this out and we're gonna create a new thing in setup. Or is it just after setup? I think it might be after setup, let's check. 
No, it is in setup. So part of the sort of base code for the ESP32, where is setup ending? Just there. Okay. Is this thing. So X task create pin to core. And so I've created a task. I've called it uh, display go. Name of the task should really be display go, but I didn't uh, do that. I just copied the guy's code. Whoops. Um, and we're going to pin it to core zero. I did check which one it's running on, and it was running on um, core one, I think, on the main loop. Anyway, this is the separate one uh, according to the printouts that I did. So we've got a, um, a function called display go. It's quite big, so I'm going to bring in some variables first, and I'll tell you why I've got them. So here's a couple of variables. I'll paste those in. One is counter, one is display, is brightness, and one is b up, and that stands for brightness up, and it's a boolean. So I'll show you what that's for in a minute, and that's for the win condition. So one way to show when the word is complete, apart from just the characters not flinging around all over the place, I want it to sort of have a sort of function to show. So let's just bring in the whole of this darn function. It is massive. There we go. So this is it. So if I just put this just before the loop, we'll bring this down a lot. So we've got a bit of space. And you'll see it is huge. So function is display go because I have no imagination. And then we're putting it inside an infinite loop inside here. Now it's not, it'll just run infinitely on the um, the other core. So you can see here we've got that um, that loop that creates random characters. And we've got counter plus plus as well. So what counter plus plus does is this is saying, oh, look, that is the character from the word that we're looking for. So it's saying if the display buffer i equals the display buffer, then we're going to say, OK, there's one to add to the win condition, and the win condition being eight, because we've got all eight characters right. So here's win check. So counter equals zero. Why am I incrementing the character there, incrementing the counter there? Maybe I don't need to be. Let's get rid of that. <laughs> we don't need it. So that this is the bit that I'm doing now, down here. So this is some redundant code, I guess. So here's our win check. So we start a counter off at zero, and then we go through a for loop again, looking at display buffer. And if that display buffer is a dash, so we know from the display buffer brings it from guess. If they've guessed correctly, we've got all the characters. Um, if it's not a dash, we add one to the counter. If the counter equals eight, then we do this win condition thing. So we set the brightness to our brightness level. We throw out our display buffer two. I was looking at blink rate, but it they don't blink at the same rate. So they start blinking at different times and then they get progressively further apart. So it's not ideal. Um, and then we're going to use a, our B up. If B up is true, brightness is plus plus. So if we're on the up, we turn the brightness up. There's probably an easier logic way of doing this. Um, but if the brightness, otherwise we go brightness minus minus. So if brightness equals equals, so if it is actually 15, then brightness up is false. So we start bringing the brightness down. So it's about going up and then down. And if the brightness equals zero, then we turn the brightness up. So it starts increasing. So it just gives it that down and up, slow up and down. Otherwise, if there is no win condition, this is the default. So we set our brightness to two, low power-ish, perfectly readable. And then we write our display buffer just like before. Oh, you can see here, I'm, I've put a delay in of 100. You can see here we've got this serial print line x get uh, core ID. So that if we wanted to see what core that particular function was running on, then we can. And that's how I figured out which one um, I needed to select up here in all the way up here, God, um, on that section here, so it's telling it where the uh, the code should run. So I put the same printout into the main loop to figure out where it was, and I just did the opposite. So that's it. Hopefully, if I just press compile, this will work. We'll see. So this is as far as I've got, essentially, is now I've got a form online. I've got some PHP code that does the... Um, the logic for me it does compile, so let's upload it. 
and I've got a couple of text files holding my word variables. Oh God, wine break. Oh no, not wine break yet. Let's just upload this. There we go. So not particularly a game, but it could be a fun interactive stream, I think. It would be a good, there we go. So we've got it flinging around. So let's get it right. What was it? Meetings, I think it was, wasn't it? So if I just send meetings, then we know if we look here, we've got meetings on the display. Now it's going to do that wind check. And I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but it is dimming a bit. It looks terrible in this awful webcam. It looks better in real life, but not brilliant. You have 15 levels of dimming and it's doing that um, once every 100 milliseconds. So it's not going to be lovely. There's not enough graduation there, is there? Not a big gradient to, to dim. It's also only running off 3.3 volts. So you can throw 5 volts into it. I'm just working on the safe side that the SP likes 3.3 volts, so the I squared C bus will also be at 3.3 volts. So that's pretty much it. That is the whole thing. Let's um, let's reset to another word. So let's put it as make a cast. So that's now changed the word to make a cast, and you can see we've started spinning around through our digits. I like how fast they spin around. It looks really cool. It could slow down a bit, but I don't know. It's up. You guys let me know if um, if it needs to. And then as we make guesses, uh, like we could guess, um, oh, what were, what, make a cast. So I don't know if any, <laughs> let's, try, well, let's try meetings. Are there any overlap, overlapping ones there? Let's have a look. No, no overlapping one. Oh yeah, M and S. So you can see I've guessed a word and it has told me that there are um, two letters that are similar. And so we can start whittling it down. You could also go, oh, and just send one letter at a time and you'll see that it brings that in. Did I put it in the wrong place? We've also got an A showing up at the end. Oh, because it's make a cast. I'm an idiot. I thought it was meetings. Oh, my word. I, I bet people are shouting at me. So M, A, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we should, yeah, there's R, A. Okay, idiot. Oh, my God. You wouldn't believe this is the first glass of wine I've had. Anyway, we can go through like that and iterate and just send through different letters at a time. You can all club together and figure out what the word is, or all of you send an individual letter on a different line. So, I mean, it's, there's a lot of combinations there, but, and there's a slight timeout on this. So, um, I don't know, is it 10 seconds or something on the timeout on this where you can send um, things so you can't particularly spam it? 15 seconds, maybe? God, it's quite long. Oh, there we go. So it'll now complete the word and then do the, the sort of wind dim, the wind dim. Well, that's it. Um, I'd love some input on this because I think it's kind of fun, um, but I'd love to do it on a more interactive forum. So like, this is great and everything. And like, I've really enjoyed making it. It would be really good to be able to do it in the live chat or something so that you can watch the video and be in the same place. So you're on that platform and you can chat in that platform and try and guess the word rather than having to have two windows open and doing the form at the same time. It'd be brilliant if I could find a way of bringing in the name of the person that guessed so that you can see who won that last word. Um, Anyway, I think this format has been pretty difficult to show you exactly the code that was going on, especially since I'd already written it. Um, because I got a bit carried away. Well, anyway, um, I think it's pretty much over there, isn't it? Um, but I've had a blast making this. It's felt like a little bit of a triumphant return to doing projects after all the stuff that's gone on. Still not over. I'm still, still haven't moved. Um, meant to be. We'll see how that goes. Who knows? Um, and I have redesigned something. I never really make these about one thing, do I? 
Um, I've redesigned this, that weird clock thing. It's top stopwatch, the CMOS clock, the Senti clock. I can't remember what it was meant to be. It's a CMOS thing. Um, it, had a, it had a specific name people didn't agree with. I can't remember. <laughs> anyway, um, it's been fun. I'd love some feedback and then I'll work on it some more and we'll do a live stream where you guys can be in the chat and guess at the same time. Hopefully we'll be able to get the Arduino IRC client working and then maybe we can do it in Twitch. But we'll do one where we just do it with the form on the website just to see how it goes and see how many people break it. <laughs> all right, I'll speak to you all later. One word that we've coded into it, which is make a cast. Now, I'm still looking at the thing because I've not done this for a long time. Okay, but that's basically the same as a string anyway. Um, no, it's not. You can treat it like a string or you can treat a string like a char array. Idiot. They're going to know that you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> um, 